Hey hi, this is a short video on L4 L7 integration with ACI. ACI allows us to integrate L4 L7 services like firewall, load balancers, etc., into the application flow. So there are two ways to integrate services with ACI, starting with 1.2, that is managed mode and unmanaged mode. In this mode, in this video, we will be focusing on unmanaged mode. Uh, in unmanaged mode, ACI only stitches the network connection, while the administration of the device is done with their existing management application. In this mode, there is no need for a device package and hence we can integrate any third-party L4 L7 service to ACI. To show that, we can integrate any L4 L7 device. Uh, in this video, I'm going to use a free load balancer called Kemp Load Balancer. So let's quickly walk through the topology as well. So as you can see, we have a tenant named Naru in which we have two EPGs, the server EPG and the user EPG. We will be inserting a load balancer between the two EPGs. When the user accesses the WIP address, the traffic will be load balanced in a round robin fashion across the two web servers. To save time, I have already installed the Kemp load balancer and set it to receive HTTP request on WIP 100.168.100.100. So let me quickly show it to you. Uh, so this is the Kemp load balancer. Um, it's already set with a virtual IP address of 192.168.100.100. It's listening on 80 and it's a layer 7 firewall. Currently the real servers are down because we have not yet uh, configured the network configuration from ACI. I am using the virtual version. Um, so you can see here. So this is the virtual version and if I look at the configuration settings, uh, we can see that the network adapter is only configured uh, for the management network. The other two network adapters are by default in the quarantine uh, port groups uh, within the vCenter. Um, in addition to that, just to save time, I've also uh, pre-configured the BDs and EPGs. So as you can see in the in the Naru's tenant, I have an application EPG called Kemp Server and Kemp User. So there are web servers which are part of the Kemp Server EPGs, and and there is a user machine which is part of the Kemp User EPGs. And you have uh, bridge domains. Uh, there is a Kemp Server a bridge domain and a Kemp User bridge domain. Um, uh, the bridge domains are defined uh, with uh, in a flooding mode. Um, and and yeah, and if you can see that within the EPGs, uh, there's actually no contract between the server and the user EPG. Uh, that means there is no communication uh, that 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 is existing between the two EPGs. So with that, uh, let's uh, start the demo. So the first thing that we need to do is to basically go to L4 L7 services and add the L4 L7 device. And I'm just going to quickly do that. So as you can see, there are two modes, as I said, one is managed and unmanaged. So since this is only a network only stitching mode that we're going to deploy, we're going to uncheck this. Sorry. I'm going to name this as Kemp. And this is a type is ADC and I'm, it's a virtual instance. So I'll choose the VMM domain. It's a single mode. <coughs> and the function type is go to. So I'm gonna, gonna select the VM. It's it's the Camp Free LB. And I'm gonna add the device interfaces. So there are two interfaces. One is the external interface, which will be the interface facing the users, and one will be the inter interface which will be facing the servers. So I'm going to name this external interface and I'm going to select this the network adapter 2. Uh, the network adapter 1 was the management interface through which I was able to access the Kemp <coughs> dashboard. I'm going to create another one called internal and I'm going to assign it to network adapter 3. Once we have this defined we can create the cluster interfaces and the cluster interfaces, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call them consumer and provider. Uh, the server side will be a provider and the user side will be the consumer. I'll do it consumer. And on the concrete interface, I'm going to use the external. Similarly, I'm going to add a provider cluster interface. And I'm going to choose internal. And I'm going to hit submit. 
So once you've uh, finished, you can see that the camp load balancer is added as an L4 L7 device. The next step, what we need to do uh, is to basically create an L4 L7 graph service template. So I'm going to quickly do that. And I'm going to call this camp load balancer. I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to use the narrow camp and I'm going to drag it. I'm going to use a two arm mode where one arm is towards the consumer and another arm is towards the provider. <coughs> Let's submit. Now once you do that, you will find that the camp load balancer is visible under the L4 L7 graph service template. So do a right click on that and I'm going to do an apply L4 L7 graph template. Once you do that, uh, uh, you're presented with the screen where you need to map the relationship between the, co <coughs> between the consumer and the provider EPGs. So this is the consumer EPG, which is basically your Naru in Naru Kemp, which will be the user EPG, which is the consumer EPG. And I'm going to provide the <coughs> Naru Kemp server, which is the provider EPG. I'm going to create a new contract and I'm going to say permit all. Then I'm going to do next. Okay. So once you uh, hit next, uh, you can see uh, that we have actually defined uh, a load balancer insertion from consumer EPG to the provider EPG. So if you can quickly go back to our vCenter, you can see that uh, there are some activities uh, in terms of configuration of port groups that is happening. So let's give it a minute and see what port groups uh, get created. So I think uh, the port group creation is all done. So I'm going to quickly check the settings of the virtual machine. And as you can see, these were all part of the quarantine uh, port groups. Now they have automatically been assigned to a, a port group, which is then used to stitch the user and the consumer and the provider EPGs. So this is all done. Let's go back to our ACI. You can open this and you can see that there is a functional node that is available and it has a consumer interface and a provider interface. You can also look at the deployed graph instance and this is the graph we actually created <coughs> which is the permit all and in that if you create the click the functional node you can find that uh, the consumer and the provider EPGs have been assigned VLAN from the VLAN pool uh, which was associated to the VMM domain itself. Now, what we can also do is maybe see, click the application profile that is the Naru Camp, and you can see now that there is a contract which is already created as part of the insertion process of the service graph between the two EPGs. I'm just going to quickly check it, and you can see that this is basically a permit all, and there is an L4 L7 graph which is called the Camp Load Balancer, which is available from user to the <coughs> server EPGs. So let's uh, quickly go back to our vCenter. So these are my two web servers and this is my user machine. I'm going to use the user machine and then see if they're going to hit. And I'm going to hit this. And I'm going to refresh the screen. And as you can see that there, the, <clears throat> there is a successful load balance that is happening between server one and server two. I've created a simple web server uh, on the two <clears throat> on the two servers, which can which helps you <clears throat> figure out that the uh, load balance is happening on a round robin basis. <clears throat> Let's also look at the uh, camp load balancer uh, just to see. And you can see that the real servers are up now. And uh, and if you go and quickly check the statistics. Of the real servers and the virtual servers you will find that the connections have now increased and uh, the virtual servers also connections have increased so right now say for example it shows 42 and if i go in and hit a few more of these it should increase yes and then we go back to our load balancer and hit a refresh And it has increased from 40 to 52. Thus, uh, with the network switching or or the unmanaged mode, we can literally 
uh, bring in any L4 to L7 device, be it a load balancer or a firewall, and integrate with ACI. And that's the power of the ACI. Thank you.